get it. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Devious. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up? What's happening? Kid Boogie. What up? We got Kid Boogie in the building. You already know this is outspoken. We got special <laughs> guests in the building. We got special guests. We got Tempo. Yeah. We got Tempo in the building. We got <laughs> Frantic in the building. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. We don't have Frantic's to more special. It's about to go down. <laughs> It's about to go down. Special to go episode. Down. Special episode of Outspoken. We had to do it. It's a nice family reunion, you know. Yeah. Um, so what's up, everybody? Frantic uh, Temple, you guys want to say something? What's up? What's up? Say what's up to Big the world. Up everybody, man. It's good to be on 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 the on the vid, man. Thanks for, for the shout out. Thanks for hitting me up. It's hard because I'm um, you know, the time difference, but other than that, hope everybody's safe out there. Uh, and you know, looking after each other, man. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. It's really good to be here and uh, basically to see family. Yeah, Apple, my brother, Devious, my brother, Kid Boogie, my brother, man. This, this, is, this is awesome. This is really awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. this is so dope. When's the uh, last yeah. time we all seen each other? What Shit, are... man. together? Shit. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we got I, 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 I kind of want to say the last time I seen Temple was at that B-Boy Summit where we all had that ruckus. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Not Summit! No, 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 no. The last time I saw everybody was not that B-Boy Summit, but B-Boy Summit in 2012. The one that I judged. Yeah, the one that, that I organized. The, the Yes, the pros and uh, prodigies one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I, was I don't think I. I don't think I was at that one. Uh, I don't think you were. Uh, uh, kid, uh, you guys were out. Of, you guys were out of the country. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, I think that's the one that Boogaloo Ken and uh, the other homie was at, right, Frantic? Yeah. Dang, that's that. So, what year was that? Two thousand. That was the one we won. <laughs> yeah. Two thousand twelve. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, no, that, that was, that was, a, that was that same B-Boy Summit, bro. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. A, yeah, so I was there. It was, it was the same B-Boy Summit where uh, everybody was beefing and shit. <laughs> and shit no, was I wild. saw you after that. I no, saw no, you after, after that. that. I saw you well after that. Oh, actually, yeah, he's right. The pros and protege one? That wasn't yeah. Right. No, no, no. The pros and protege one is the one I I, I had um put together. Yeah. You know, for, for it was or but the one that everybody was at, the big one, that was in two thousand ten. That that's what, what uh, Kid Boogie. That's uh, okay, okay. Performed, okay. That's when I performed to that Santana, the jingle Yeah. Beat. Yeah. Uh, oh, let, let, let me just let me just make the record clear. Kid Boogie, thank you for your your patience on that day, man. Everybody was, was beefing and everybody that was involved. You know, man, um, you've always been been a stand up guy, um, and you've always been a real motherfucker, man. I've, I've always had respect for you, so, so thank you for at least keeping your head clear and keeping calm during that shit. Um, yeah, it was. No, nah, very... man. I mean, it, it was cool, man. Like, I mean, shit happens. You know, we were. This is a. Uh, I mean, it's a street dance. <laughs> <Shit happens. laughs> Dude. I can't really, you know, but but thank you. I, I mean, so, and so the feeling is mutual, bro. I've always had respect for for you ever since you were with Legend and them. You know, like it, mm -hmm. it's always been, uh, yeah, deep respect, bro. Yep. Yes. Every time. I, you know what? The the crazy part is, I know we got to get into to everything, you know, with with the whole outspoken thing. I don't know what to call you. Uh, I don't know about because you introduced yourself as Alan. Yeah. So anytime somebody says Kid Boogie, I'll be like, oh, okay. They're talking about Alan. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to be disrespectful because, you know, that's the name no, that no, you no, have. Just, just, call me what, just, just call me whatever you feel comfortable with, brother. I, ain't well, yeah, I always go based off of what the person is calling for, man. But it's like anytime you would come, come around, I'd be like, what's up, Alan? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want not to cool out the whole thing. But it's just... <laughs> That's so nah, good. It's all good. 
That's how that's how good. far back everyone goes, man. Introducing by your real name still, you know, like <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah. I mean, motherfucker. <laughs> now, now Frantic, Frantic will be getting mail under Boogie Frantic. This motherfucker will be like, this, <laughs> he'll be getting mail from the government under Boogie Frantic. <laughs> I just I, I just call that motherfucker Rick. That's Rick, man. <laughs> that's so dope, man. Dude. So if that's the last time we've seen each other, then I can't imagine when's the last time all of y'all been oh, in cipher. That's ten years. Yeah. Ago, at over least. a decade. No, that's ten years ago. It's 2020, fool. Wow. That's yeah. a decade, bro. That is a decade. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. crazy. <laughs> Dang. Ages. Ages. That's wow. Uh, wow. So, yeah, so everyone, as you can see, we're having a nice reunion right now, catching up. That's what this whole episode is going to kind of be like. Um, you know, we're going to we're gonna freestyle it like we normally do. Uh, we got a special battle yeah, that we're yeah. going to watch together. You know, we're going to watch and talk about it and just have a good time. Um, as the people know, uh, you know, this, this podcast is, is just, uh, it's, it's what it says, outspoken. So... We're going to talk how we feel about it. No one's going to take anything personal because we're all about love. Everyone's cool. Every, it, it's dad's yeah. heart, so it's everyone's different perspective on it. And, yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah. the battle yeah. we're going to watch, I think most of us were probably there. Poppy, I was there. I know that. Poppy P. Yeah, I was there. I was there, too. <laughs> yeah. Poppy P versus Playboy Eddie. What, what year was that? Oh, this has to be, no, I, I'll tell you right now. I, I, I want to say it was 2005, 2004. Wow. I think I was there. You I probably, That's what I was saying. Like, all, uh, it was 13 years remember. ago, so at least. Yeah, there, there, there was a point in time where I disappeared again and went back to Michigan. Ah! Yeah. 2006. It was around 2006. Okay, okay so I, oh, I might not be there. I saw the, I, I think I, I recall seeing the video, but. I you know, it might have been before. That's just the day it was uploaded. It was that's the oh, day. Right, right. It, 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 was, it was definitely 2005, 2004 because Skeeter Rabbit was there. Oh and Skeeter yeah, Rabbit was in 2006. No, yeah, my pop yeah. was there too. My my pops was there, and it was too, my pops passed away in 2015. So I mean, uh, okay, so, so I might have been there. So yeah, no, it had yeah, oh, so yeah. it had to be 04. It had to be 04. Yeah, mm. but you know, this right here, this was when. Things were at their peak in terms of tension between groups of people. So, yeah, yeah, let's get into it. Man. I, love, I love this battle. Here we go, here we go. Shit. You guys ready? Let's see, let's see. Oh, Lordy. And make, understand make sure that. To, <laughs> what happened? Make sure to uh, turn down the volume on the video a little bit. <laughs> You're right, you're right. I'll be bumping it hella loud. <laughs> you guys don't understand, I'm deaf, man. I've been next to speakers for 10 years just blasting in my ear while I host events. Like, <laughs> um, But the quality is not going to be the best, but that's usually the dopest battles, all right? Yeah, yeah. Go, go yeah. off your memory. <laughs> so, you guys want me to pause, rewind, anything like that? Just say it, all right? Oh, oh, look at the crowd. Look at how many people are there. It's crazy. It was fucking massive, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 90% of them are there with the EVs, though, for sure. Wait, wait, wait. Before, before we get too deep into it, before we get in too deep into it, what was the cause right. for the battle? I have no, no, no. no. This, this, event, this event was, uh, I don't know if you guys remember a dude named Crescendo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course. He used to throw this event every year back then. Okay. I I forget. Fuck. I, I fucking forget what the event was called, bro. Well, but it wasn't how the West uh, was won, or was it the hip hop uh, awards? Yeah, the hip hop. Yeah, it, well, yeah, it, it was the awards. It was the awards. Yeah. Oh shit! It was the awards. Wow. That's wow. Dangerous. What? <laughs> Everyone. So to give some context, there was these hip hop awards. And I'm not sure how many years before this that they did it, but it was something big that I know people, everyone would go to, you know, because it's really the only thing, because it was really a uh, real street dance, like real hip hop awards, not like um, a, a mainstream rapper gets an award, you know, like street dancers and innovators. So 
Mm. Yeah, man. Shout out to uh, what's the what the, what's the gentleman's name? Uh, crescendo. His name is Crescendo. Crescendo, much love for doing that, man. Mm. Who was the MC though? Because I got a problem with the MC that for this motherfucker. See, Bro, I don't know. I don't know. And he he wears his hat. Anyone who wears their hat like this, anyone who wears their hat like this on the mic, I don't trust them. Straight up trust. Hey, hey, this this was this was when Pop and Pete's knees were like almost perfect, bro. Like, <laughs> yep. you, you know his knees now ain't all that great right now, but well, yeah, then, yeah, man. How many years can you just keep those knees well oiled? You know, like I know. <laughs> Yo, and, and just and, and just to give you guys like background on this, I was there and. And in, in the beginning, Playboy Eddie came all hot because he wanted to battle Boogaloo Sam. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, because Sam, Sam, Ski, and Pete were there. Mm -hmm. and, and and Playboy Eddie wanted to, like, he wanted to battle Sam. And, and, and Pete and Ski were, like, kind of, like, arguing, like, nah, nah, I'm going to battle him. Nah, I'm going to battle him. So it ended up being that Pete was like, all right, you, you get him. So, so... Because none, none of them wanted Sam to battle, you know? Yeah, of course. It's the big, big yeah. one right there. I would yeah. love to see Skeet, though. Just because that, because, you know, I, I, Pete is, like, a lot more uh, calm, you know? And, like, yeah, Skeet would have been up in that face, though. That shit would have made that yeah. shit, <laughs> shit would have been crazy. But still dope that it was Pete, you know, still legendary. Just the selfish yeah. side of things. We didn't get to see Skeet. Rest in peace. Yeah. I would want to see that. But, damn, I didn't know that. See, I just, especially being a kid, like I, I, I'm just like watching everything and like really taking it in, not really knowing the backstory. So it's so dope that, um, you know, even myself that was there, I'm finding out, you know, new things about what was going on. You know, so yeah, hell yeah. yeah so. and, and, and of course, of course, all of you guys know how Playboy Eddie is when he comes yeah. in hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, like oh, freestyle with Cobra. <laughs> no filter. For those that don't know Playboy Eddie, man, like that's a straight, just <laughs> he's so much energy with no matter what, he's not ever under a hundred. He's always turned up, like so. When, <laughs> he only goes up from a hundred, you know. It doesn't start at zero, yeah. for sure, man. Oh damn! <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> I, oh God, Shit. I'm telling you, bro, them golden moves. Uh oh, no. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yo, everyone shuts the fuck up. No, no cheering, no nothing for Playboy Eddie, though. <laughs> no, it's so fucked I, up. I, I'm, I'm getting Yo. a little bit, a bit of, a bit of feedback in, interference with the, the clip. It's coming to be choppy, but I do remember a lot of it. All I was thinking was, man, your knees are just pretty much raw right about now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. He went. Yeah. He, he fled. He had to. <laughs> I wonder if there was a cipher before this, if they were ciphering or anything before it. But because if they were, I'm sure that's the that knees were even more busted. Hard ass mm. floor. Mm. Oh, Yo, he, he's hitting as hard as he can. <laughs> Yo, look at those glides, though. To me, that dead leg move that he just did right there is one of the hardest gl glides I've ever seen, bro. Like, the, the way he came out of those glides. But look at Pete in position, waiting for his ass. Waiting for his ass and pulling oh, up. Forward? <laughs> what happened? Uh, you, you talking about the glide where he goes forward? No, yeah. no, this one right now that he's doing, he glides and then he just kind of does like a dead foot and he just kind of points at it like on some like swaggy oh, shit. shit. 
And then uh, you got Pete right there in his position just waiting for his round. Some old school <laughs> shit, you know? Hold on, hold on, let Pete get some now. in it bro fuck oh, that, that's <laughs> cool. so crazy they're, like they're battling they ain't trying to this ain't no just like uh let me just go around no they going at it but for those that don't know this whole group of people right here this is the little ebs and some family yep. and shit and like something i want to say like for sure that always was kind of for me like damn this is the the biasness but what i didn't realize back then is like yo that's not really the, as much as the dancers fall, like you can't expect a person's family or people to not be hyped for their for their peak. You know what I'm saying? This and like true. that that's just really like what what this is like. Because Eddie's killing that shit. You know, it just that at this time, um, you know, especially like people like Eddie and shit, they weren't rolling with nobody. <laughs> they're coming solo. Right. Like, and uh, uh, popping Pete and them, they're so family based, so family oriented. You know what I'm saying? So like they always yeah. be rolling with all their family, their students and shit. And, you know, like, before a lot of people used to hate on, like, you know, them getting love. But it's like, yo, that's their family. Like, what the fuck you want them to do? Boo yeah, them? Yeah, like, but, uh, but also, but also, bro, like, you got to show a lot of respect to Playboy Eddie for coming there dolo. You know what I mean? Like, that's shit. true, man. Like, <laughs> that's true. Come on, man. Like, he went in there by himself and, took, and tried to take on everybody. <laughs> Straight up, yo. And th this is when people but, still talked with their hands. People still yeah. have conversations with exactly, their bro. <laughs> you know that, that's, 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 also, that's why, that's why I want to point out something too. I want to point out something too that gets overlooked a lot. Um, not necessarily by, by our, our our class, you know, as far as our, our age group. People don't really use glides in battles that much anymore. Mm -mm. No. Nah. Especially in a beef battle. But to have the balls to pull that out, mm -hmm. you know, because, because back then... It, Glides in certain cases was a means to get from point A to point B. Yeah. In battle, and and that that's something that we uh, even I, I guess in my case I try to reintroduce that later on, maybe around about 2007, 2008, to try to get used to using these these moves that don't really get a lot of you know usage anymore, man. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's nice to see both of those two old school um, uh, perspectives actually clashing together. Because it's it's a rare sight, especially. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to speak on each 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 one's caliber, but when you look at it, it's like we're getting a a quick you know a quick view of how it may have been back then, mm. how yeah. hostile it was. You know what I mean? How fucking hostile it was. It, it was it was no joke. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Either we gonna battle, we might win. We might break out into a fist fight at some point. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just that 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 balance of, of we don't know how this is gonna go, and that's where the excitement was, right? Yeah. No, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's that using I was I, I watched very closely over the years. It's like, man, we a lot of us just don't battle like that no more, man. You know? Nah. It's just it's just not it's it's not it wasn't necessarily built into us for that. We come from the age where we had to take the circles with the B boys. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, so we all know how how that can get very violent real quick. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying you go out there try to pop the circle with the B boys, they very particular because they doing flips and all this other stuff. But if you can match that energy, you can take their circle. They start to show more respect to you. Back then, it, it seemed to be a lot more different and a lot more vile <laughs> because because you had to be dope. You had to be. Yeah. You had, that's you had, that's you had you had your homies, 
you had the opposition people that you're up against and whoever's hood you're in. Mm -hmm. Then you had the girls who's probably going to clown you if you're not good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of factors that, that factored in back then to now, and they still got that built into them. That's what they knew. That's, part, that's, yeah. that's why they responded to each other the way they did, which is really good. Yo, they have to be ready to take out the whole crew, not just that one person. You yeah, have to yeah. Take out every one of you, because every time I would battle an MGF or somebody, I was like, I'm going for all of them. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. It just can't be just one. You know what I mean? So because it's, yeah, you never, yeah. You never knew what was gonna happen. You yeah. never knew how it was gonna go down. The person who you went to go battle, probably you probably got a seventy percent chance not battling him, but battling his crewmate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because the crewmates all lit up. They 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 ready to go. And they the first one to jump out before the person you came after. You know, no, yeah, that's, it, that's, that's that's pretty much what happened when uh me and JJ battled Popular and J Rock. I it was remember that. Be, yeah, it oh, was supposed yeah. to be J Rock versus JJ, and out of nowhere, me and Popular just started going at it for no goddamn reason. <laughs> Yo, it was like yeah, man, it was just like, you know, fuck it, we're 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 here now. We're here oh, now. Yeah. I see, <laughs> and I was absolutely amazed, man, because it was like that's the setting. That that's like the classic setting you want to get it get it off in. You have no control over the music. You're not homies with the DJ. You're not you're not homies with everybody in the joint. It's literally me and you about to go head to head, and your homie just happened to be here. So in defense, just in case, let let me address this motherfucker over here. You know, yeah. <laughs> like I, I just always remember how, like so many battles between all your all your generation just off of like people making eye contact. You know, like like you know you roll up with one crew rolls up, the other crew rolls up, and then the homie makes eye contact with another one, and boom, <laughs> the fucking crew battles happening. <laughs> and, and you know yeah. how it also it also it, and that that's funny you said that because normally when you're at the edge of the circle and somebody's getting down, it's always that one person or the homie going, hey, man, I think he kind of looking at me. Is he looking yeah. at me while he's doing yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this? Oh, I might, I might have to go ahead and, I don't know, man. Oh, okay, he ended up in front of me. It's on now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. true, that's true, because I remember when I called out JJ, JJ was looking at Kid Boogie like, hey, is this really happening right now? <laughs> Bloody, bro. No, that that's so dope because like um definitely in this battle you like what Tempo was saying, there's just that it, it gives us that little glimpse of what it was in the past and not just because they're um doing it like it, but it's because they were actually there, you know. So it's not like they're trying to emulate something that they were taught or like that they saw someone else. They're doing what, you know, create they're they're just behaving the way, you know, people who are the culture behave, you know, and it's just like look at how they're responding to each other's moves and yeah you know, you know like there's there's that conversation you know that's the the word that we're using nowadays they're having that conversation on the dance floor and you know not all these conversations are so peaceful and friendly like you felt right you felt that shit like it's like yo motherfucker like this is this is me what's up you know and it's not worried about the props you know like like uh eddie like if he was worried about the props and worried about if he was going to lose or not, he wouldn't have showed up because he knew the crowd, the MC, everything was going to be against them. Even like, I even see some people that I thought were cool with him in this video fucking going for Pete, you know, which is also, <laughs> like, I'm like, God damn. Hey, he really solo, solo in this shit. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. when, you, when you look at it though, man, like, Battling why and we've all been there because we're I mean, let's just be honest, the people that's on this this podcast right now, we're a bunch of fucking battle mongers, right? Yeah. At, at some point. Yeah. Like that's all we searched out, right? Because we wanted to test ourselves. Battling from what from what I've got because I had a lot of time to sit on this, battling is no nothing more than a Q and A session. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A massive Q and A session. The I got some I, I'm a quick can you do this? Answer. Person yeah. tells out, yes I can, but can you do this? Mm. answer yep okay i could do that but can you do that and it's always that back and forth it just on a physical note with their upbringing and things like that it always it, it was going to be one or the other either we're going to get down or we're going to throw down we don't actually fight so that element that that aggressiveness is always there you know yeah it's always like sitting in the background you know no for sure no and it sucks because for me even though like you know i i came up and like 
your guys' generation and was there to experience it. I'm still like another generation. So when I really started getting my name in the game and going like, I still had this mentality and everyone's already over it. You know, it was like, <laughs> you know, like, like, you know, like, yo, what the fuck you doing? Like, why are you mad? Or, and I'm just like, yo, no, this is how you're supposed to battle. This is what, like, Frantic Temple, this is what Jekyll fucking, everyone taught me, you know, it's like, no, nah, no, nah, that's back in the day, you know? I remember that shit. <laughs> Devious straight called out Guchan in his face. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> like, why? Everyone looked at me like, like, why, bro? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta say bye to my cousin real quick. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I tried. I, I tried to call out Gushan in um in Sweden. Did not want to do anything. So I was like, okay, we'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> it just then again I was a different I was a different person back then. <laughs> so Yeah, that's, see, that's the thing too, is that the personalities of like a lot of us, it's still who we are. Um yeah. it's just that yeah. like it, we're it, grown it, now. Yes, yeah, we're yeah. definitely a lot more grown and a lot, back then, I think it's just a lot more passion took over common sense in a lot of situations, and a lot of people get that yeah. confused, and you know they judge people based on certain behaviors. But don't get it, don't get it fucked up. It was passion. All of us are just so passionate, yeah. especially you know Tempo, Frantic, Kid Boogie's generation. Like these motherfuckers would have to like, like they would, they don't know if they're walking out of the jam the way they walked in, you know. So like you have to understand that this was the mentality that. You were dancing for your life in a way. Like this wasn't no dancing to get two hundred bucks. Like fucking sometimes I remember jabs would be like, yo, a hundred bucks and some gear, and then they wouldn't even give the hundred bucks. You know, they just give you guys yeah. gear and y'all be happy. Happy as fuck. You know, like but um hell yeah. So Bro, the, all right. the best the, the best one that I've ever gotten was like after I won a jam out here. <laughs> oh, you did it for the love, right? Like yeah. motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> like what do you mean I did it for the love? Like <laughs> Oh bro, my my worst one was we did a t uh, it was an unlimited crew battle and they said two thousand dollars, right? Two thousand dollars and we put together it was Casper, Nasty Ray, X Mob, for me, Lobo, <laughs> Rock Swift. Like we put together a dope squad because it was some nice chunk of change. We go to the door and then we're, uh, it was like 50 bucks to get in each person right and each crew had like 10 <laughs> people bro and then we tell that we tell the dude i don't even want to say his name we tell the dude like oh, yo hook it up bro let us in for free he looks at us in our face and he's like two thousand dollars yo like trust me like it's worth it so he gave us the guilt trip all of us were like all right we cost up the money we won the damn event we're waiting in the lobby the, everyone's gone. Everyone's Frantic was a motherfucking judge. He comes down, and I'm like, "Yo, Frantic, what's up?" Like all of us, and he's just like, "Oh, I, I don't know. He, he paid me though, but uh, <laughs> he's like, he's like he paid me. He's like so, but he's up there. And we're like, all right, we're gonna wait for him. Yo, he never came. This guy never came down. The security just pushed us out. We never got paid. Wow. We, we did it for oh, the love, man. man. We you know how much we practiced for that shit. <laughs> wow. Oh, but crazy. Still, you know, this was normal. So it wasn't like, like, this was just, you always knew that there was a chance you ain't getting shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always. Just <laughs> <laughs> right. right. finish this damn battle. Shit. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up so quick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
too like i don't want to blame the crowd too much it's just that at that time too a lot of people weren't used to seeing people pop like that um yeah. just slow and like taking their time like that they're used to high energy you know especially with that bug style you know um but 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 also to add to that too to add, 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 add to that to that to that thought man um another thing that i've noticed in in this particular battle another thing going back to their experience both of them didn't really do any unnecessary movement at all. Mm -hmm. If you really know yeah. what they're doing, they didn't do anything that was like, why are you sticking your ass out all extra? Or why yeah, did yeah. Look <laughs> like, what, whatever they did, y'all see, because because a lot of people do the shit, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, so yeah. whatever they were doing was totally in in line with whatever they actually knew, mm -hmm. and yeah. you can tell that even even when I mean, look at Pete, Pete like what like a 20, 30 years most of us and he's doing that at that time but he wasn't doing anything that was unnecessary even to the point yeah. where 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 he went to the ground he touched the ground once for assistance readjusted went back up and then came out of it yeah which is an extremely hard thing to do it puts a lot of pressure on your yeah. joints even at that age so i mean we're coming up on pete's age when he actually popped in that clip if if not we're already there That's true <laughs> you yeah. know so so they, they, their rules are a lot different. A lot of them didn't touch the ground to assist them getting back up. You know, that the whole touching the ground thing was like this. This only started happening around about 2007 when everybody See, was doing it. I tell people and all the time that used to be considered not popping if you touched the ground. That was a, that was a no, no. Even yeah. even in Michigan, it was a no, no. Like, like, nigga, why do you need to help? Why you got to touch the ground to make them move? <laughs> why do you need to help? <laughs> like, like that's, that's, that's how it was. It was like, well, what's going to look better? The dude that does the the, the backflip, a regular backflip, or the no hands backflip. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 very simple, and it's it's something to watch. And hopefully, when people see this and they see see us talking about it, it's like, look, man, look at what these motherfuckers are doing. You know, I can yeah. understand as you age, there's certain moves you can't just be doing W's at the age of sixty and expect to come straight the fuck up out of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can't expect blacktop once he hits the age of sixty or seventy to do the splits and to do it unassisted because your body's going to take a lot of that damage over time and you don't heal like it used to, yeah. you know? Sometimes yeah. you just say, fuck it, I'm going to go for it. But <laughs> it's a, a month of movie, <laughs> you got a whole month yeah. you out. <laughs> this this one 15-minute battle is going to cost me about six months of healing. That's, yeah. that's what a lot of women are thinking, you know? <laughs> no, it's so it's, 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 it's good to see how in a battle between two people like that, how they manage themselves. So to speak, yeah. I think that's a good way to uh, to look at it. I mean, I've I, I've seen a number of battles and been a part of them. Uh, I know he, all all of us have, and it's always how, the one thing I look at when I see anybody get down is is how they manage themselves at that point in time, because mm. that 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 normally determines the win, right? How you're managing yeah. yourself, how you're coping with with the excitement and things like that. It's like. I believe was it R sixteen? I think Franicky was in. I think I think Alan was in it too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very like like I, I look at things and see how they how you're managing and coping because those are the things that most people who get into the whole battle culture of street dancing they don't really delve more into of how to how to manage themselves in in a situation like that, mm -hmm. especially the beef situation. Most beef situations people just go out and just do any fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. And this they're place, going and they're just like fuck it. Yeah, man, but but in this case, it's like you get the chance to see them actually be methodical somewhat about it, you know, no. and actually pay attention, pay the fuck attention to what they're doing personally and what the other person is doing, so this way they can respond appropriately. No, it, so that's just something I noticed. No, that's real, and something else I want to add to it is like, um, 
everyone's knowledge of like health and fitness now is like you have to understand back in those days playboy eddie probably just got done eating two cheeseburgers and a coke and came straight to the damn jam and was doing that poppy pete was probably fucking up some food too right before his fucking battle you know and uh like it's not just because they're unhealthy it's just that the knowledge of like what we know today and what dancer how dancers treat their bodies today was not even close to being especially that battle it was probably still it was not it was it was non-existent, bro. Stretching. How about <laughs> true? How, yeah. how many times did you see any of these people stretch in your life? None. Never. <laughs> Ever. Never. Ever. I remember when Frannick used to when Frannick first started doing the stretching thing, I was so used to not seeing it. I used to clown on him, being like, Why are you stretching, bro? And he's just like, You're gonna get older <laughs> one day. He's like, when you get older, I'm gonna laugh at your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember because I just never I just was I came up watching y'all. No one stretch ever, you know? And now mm -hmm. you can't even imagine that. Like, you know, like people look at you crazy. Like, yo, bro, stretch, warm up, you know? <laughs> like, no, nah, yeah, they ain't yeah. warming up. They just, they put down a Coca-Cola and boom, those were the rounds you just saw, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that shit was crazy. But that's what makes it even crazier that they're able to do that with their bodies at that age. Because let's say they're 38, 39 at that time. That's really like 50 years old today, you know, how they treat their bodies and shit. Like, yeah. Because now, like... 38, 39 with, with all this health and fitness stuff, you could still be, you're still young, you know, you can still do some stuff, but um, back yeah. in those days, no, 38 was different, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 Yo, they cut my boy off. That is so bloody. What happened? That's the famous one leg set right there. Yep, I was yeah. about to, yep. Look at Shoney going crazy in the back. Shoney is a fool. Yo, remember when Shoney flipped you off, Radic, in the battle? And Pete stopped. Pete, hold up. Oh, we got to get the full screen for this motherfucker. Yo, <laughs> this was Shoney. Was it the finals or something? I don't know what, but. Semis. So Shoney, Pete's uh, son, was battling Frantic, and he flipped Frantic off in the battle, and Poppy Pete stopped the battle to check Shoney from doing that. It was, like, the craziest <laughs> thing, like... Yeah, bro, <laughs> bro, bro, you don't stop being a daddy because your son's out there, you know what I'm saying, popping. The shit don't <laughs> stop. And I've been in their house. I've slept on, on egg, and, and, and Alan knows, and most people know that yeah. I, I always be around them a lot. Nigga, yeah, like it's, you think that's that's something? Go to fucking Wiggles' house. <laughs> <laughs> but that yeah. dude's a fucking—he's a fucking Puerto Rican prince in that fucking house. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, bro, like all because you're pop and you're doing what you, what your family does don't mean you're gonna go out there and act a fool mm -hmm. and disrespect. You know what what these people's doing, and that, that that's that's a good trait to have. Get them right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same thing with our kids. You know, they don't pop nothing, but if we be out at the store and they start acting a fool, I'm going to get you right there. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they learn not to do that. This is how you actually got to carry yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, good pointing that out too, man. No, I had to just because, like, something I always try to let people know, anyone, especially younger generation, is like, yo, don't, don't, uh, don't bypass their human traits, you know, what makes them good humans. Like, don't overlook those things. Those Because then once you're not l overlooking it, you could get over the little, you know, biasness that you could say happens when one judges or with this, you know, during old battles. Like, because then, you know, you could look, you could get past it. You go, you know what? Past all the, like, dance beef shit, this is a good, good this is a good human being. You know, this is a good person. Yeah. Uh, he, exactly what you said is what he said on the mic. You know, he's like, yo, we don't do that. You know, we don't disrespect. That's not how we battle. You know, battle. Like, he gave he gave a good little speech. Um, I don't know if it's online, but I just always remember that, you know. Uh, but, yeah, the reason I pointed out is because Shorty was going crazy in the back. Shorty's always been a ball of energy, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah.
Tic Tac was out there, bro. Tempo, we lost tempo. Yeah, yeah, he should be coming back right now. But yo, how's the MC gonna go? That's a dime stop on that one. <laughs> He's like, yo, I'm getting a free workshop after this motherfucker. I don't give a fuck. He's like, I'm gonna be linked up for life with them. Oh man, let's see, let's see what happens. Maybe his bro, you, you know how hard that was to do. I can't even do that for twenty seconds, bro. <laughs> Yo, and something I want to say too is like what, and it's 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 probably weird to say because uh, he's a legend, but something that I feel always is not said about Pete enough or not appreciated enough about Pete is um uh oh yo so yeah tempo's back all right um what I'm saying is like uh, no all good because uh, uh, right now we're saying how crazy you know like what he's doing with one leg and then uh, you know how even right now it's hard to do uh, but um yeah so. It's crazy to, to hear this that, you know, there's things that Pete doesn't get credit for. And one of them is the risk he takes when he dances, you know, because with the, with the Boogaloo style, people, especially back then, would say it's a lot more safer style to do because of the techniques that are involved. But no matter what, you always see Pete always taking those risks in his dance, you know, and um, yeah. but taking the no, risk. You know what? Go ahead. You, you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm, and that's good you mentioned that, man. Um, there's there's a lot of moves in in um in what we call the world of popping that are what I would classify as this is more of a low risk high risk moves. W's are definitely around the the, the high risk things, but just for the simple fact that it's an unnatural way that your body's bending, um, putting all that pressure on one leg and moving around like that, that's a high risk. Mm-hmm. Shoot downs are definitely high risk. The biggest high risk move that I've ever seen that I know something could go bad, and I actually seen somebody get injured was a, the 747s, right? And I've had this chat with Pete before in the past and in and, and certain, you know, twistos and things like that. And with a 747, if nobody's actually seen it, you know, it involves you spinning around on one leg, but you're slightly bent backwards, right? Going around yeah, the circle. Yeah, we used to do so, this. You know, just remember to get, I mean, but what happens if, if the ground is sticky and your foot gets caught and all of a sudden all that body weight on top above the knee is twisting like that on that one leg. Yeah. You know, a lot can happen, man. A lot can happen. Um, I, 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 which is why, you know, when I see a lot of like the bone breaker kids coming up and things like that, I'm like, man, these, these motherfuckers are going to have some problems come 40. <laughs> I'm glad true, very true. Up. Because, uh, that's what people don't realize too. This art form is very new. So like any permanent damage that like we could be doing to ourselves doing this is now going to barely start showing itself with a lot of our OGs, you know, because unfortunately a lot of the people who did it back in the day has, have passed. So they have, they weren't able to get to that age, but the ones who are still around who are getting to that 50, 60 range, um, they're gonna have certain. They're gonna. They're gonna have certain damage they've done to their bodies. Uh, you know that they probably didn't even know that they were that they did just from popping. Like, yep. Did yeah. he, you know how much? I was think like uh, I forgot who I was talking with this about, but hitting and I'm sure a lot of poppers know this. They get headaches. A lot of poppers yeah, get yeah. headaches. Like a yeah. lot, especially the ones who bang. Look, frantic, Chad. Yep. The list goes. Yep. Tampa, 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 Kid Boogie, because. If you look at any of the documentaries about brain damage and like concussions and shit like that, yo, and you see some of y'all hit, it's worse than a minor car accident. You know, it's worse than like, <laughs> it's worse than like, um, this is true. like some of y'all hit worse than going heads up in football with someone who's weak, you know, but like, um, We're doing yeah, it for is... like four hours straight, you know what I mean? Four, four or five hours, six hours sometimes, depending on the event or like, or just being a teenager, like clubbing, you know, like you're you're guaranteed to be from from ten o'clock till two a.m. Four hours is just nonstop. Bah, bah, you know, that's crazy. Dehydrated, dehydrated. Yeah. 
<laughs> not with the with no proper nutrition. I was talking to Dizzy about it. That's who I was talking uh, to Dizzy from Playboys. He says he gets headaches too, you know. But uh, that was just, yeah, just mentioning all that, putting it, tightening it all together. Um, but yeah, this is why it's important for us to take care of ourselves. You know, it's never too late to take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah, brother. Shit, but I've never seen it that much. Okay, that was it. That was Hold on. Back up. Look, at, look at Legend, like, y'all, you gonna let him go another round? You heard this, fool? I already know who won, but I'm gonna let y'all vote. <laughs> 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 Bro, like they had little Coco, Tic Tac, Tic Tac, uh, Cobra, Legend, Legend, and then all of us sprinkled <laughs> within the crowd. Like, and I'm sure there's like another fucking twenty dope ass legends. He said, "Yo, it's a knockout. What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I wish people knew had the the foresight to know to record what happened after. But there's never, never, you know, that never happened. But that's when the real shit really would pop off because you can already see there everyone barking at each other. You know, you see Legend yeah. shouting some shit, you see Tic Tac shouting some shit. I know Playboy Eddie was probably going the fuck off, probably still dancing. But um, yeah, man, that, that battle right there. I know. How often? No. No, but see, see that that's 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 like that at the end that that's when you know you have a fucking whack ass MC, bro. Like, how are you just gonna cut it off like that <laughs> and start giving your fucking opinion on it? Like, you know what the fuck is going on? Like, bro, shut yeah, the you, fuck up and yeah, let them you, dance. You can't be biased. You can't be biased when it comes when you're an MC or a DJ. You can't be rude for one side. That shit just. It exactly, does. that's fucking retarded, bro. Like, so why are you doing what's that? What's wrong with you? I've had to learn that. I've I had to learn. I've I've had to humble myself so much being an MC because you know at first it just started as being an MC for our events, and then I started doing other events, and I was like, oh shit, like I can't carry over my personal feelings when I'm being hired to do some shit. You know, like regardless yeah. of what I feel for them, I got to give them the same energy I'm gonna give someone I fuck with. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. Because of times like this, I always remember shit like this being like, yo, I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to look like that guy at fucking with Playboy Eddie and Pete Battle, where he was just like, <laughs> the whole time, you know, like, just, you know, the MCs and DJs got to understand, like, at one point, they were the focal point of the culture, but it's evolved, you know, when you're at a jam, like, and I, to this day, I have I, it gets to me when like the, the MCs or DJs make it about themselves and less about the dancers. And uh, you know, you can see it when they're like, I remember, and I know you guys know it when y'all were coming up. You go look at all the old footage. If it's a forty-five second round, the MC's talking for twenty-two seconds. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen it. 
And then, or, or the DJ would scratch. I know y'all, I know y'all remember that when DJs would fucking scratch through rounds and shit. Like, yo, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna get on. Like, fuck that. I'm gonna perform right now. And they used to kill so many dope battles. And like this one, man, like if it was like in a close cipher, like without no MC, I'm sure that shit would have went 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Yeah, it would have oh, been easy. rounds, bro. Easy. I remember I, I, I used to trip out because like when it's organized showcases like 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 usually the battles that we're competing now um when it's scratching it it just didn't make sense you know like i could I see it all cypher like if you're if you're djing like to dj you know what i'm saying but if you're over there can like if you're in the game to challenge the dancers i don't think like the organ showcases where you actually showcase oh i'm a dj you know what i mean like it's kind of like a you're taking away from the, the the competition factor, you know. You're allowing yeah allowing the ego to kind of be like, well, I'm still gonna be, you know, what I am, and and, and it doesn't matter. It's like, I don't know, man. That just doesn't that doesn't for, like add on the fair side, you know. No, no, for yeah. sure, for sure, and that that for sure, I think uh, held back popping a lot, you know, because a b boy could still head spin to that shit. Where a popper, you know, you barely getting into your groove. 20 seconds in your round and you hear just like fresh, <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, God. yeah, I'm like. But also the, the flip side of that too, to, just to add to that is, it, 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 I wouldn't say it was like a downfall, but it's it's all about uh, preparedness, you know? Um, uh, we have all been in a cypher or something like that where we might catch a lucky break. We getting down, the song is playing out. They'll probably get to the second verse and then you can hear that, couple of second delay where you think like okay this dude's gonna change the song he's starting to scratch and you just happen to catch the scratch yeah. you know yeah you just happen to get, there's, there's some magical moments where where if if you're prepared you've practiced and you've been in the habit of being in an environment but that has that you know then then yeah, then, yeah but for the majority a lot of people don't know what to do with that you know um, awesome. but 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 here's the thing half of the fucking djs that are DJing these contests don't know how to scratch. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. Or two, they don't know how to fucking mix, period. <laughs> and that's the thing, because a good DJ who knows how to scratch is going to time it with what's going exactly. on. Like, you get a Mark exactly. Love or something like that, they're he's, watching. He's going to scratch on beat, bro, yeah, like, where yeah. you can actually dance to it. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, 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 I that's, agree. That's what I I'm agree. talking about. Like, like it, it's... it's I mean, if it's an organized showcase, the DJ is hired to like basically, like if we're going like, what was it? Uh, the who can roast the most? You're going seven rounds. You, yo, it's a constant thing. You know, the DJ yeah. basically has seven rounds to go in. So I, I will not take away from him doing his thing at that time. But if it's like one round each time and you're, you know, you're yeah. allowing, and if homeboy's bored and he's just like, all right, I'm just gonna start fucking with people. But he's like trying to pretend like he's in his groove. I'm like, bro, you, you know for a fact you're not in your groove. You know you're you paying attention and making sure like everything flows because that's what you're hired to do. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not trying to tell a DJ how to do his job, but it's just like at an event, you know, I'll look at Rock Swift sometimes and be like, bro, don't ever do that again. And he'll look at me like, <laughs> and then I look at I'll nudge devious like tell the fucker man like I've been doing that shit you know and he's like and I know the pressure's on him because yeah. he's expected to to give that 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 feeling you know that that vibe if you're looping a song or you gotta rewind a song because it's too short you know that okay I understand that as long as you hit that on beat but there's like a okay. cipher with me and you Temple like when we were at a freestyle session oh yes at yes. the time when Qbert was going off. Everybody was like, and me and this motherfucker are going in, bro. Like, oh, I feel that shit because we can connect to that. Like, he's because because that, that that was that was a, a familiar ground for us. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, we were used to being in a situation where we absolutely did not know who the DJ was, or it was kind of so so, and it, it was just like we have to be able to go with it in order for it to look right or come off right. You know, you. Have to, you gotta, you gotta feel it, but at the same time, remove the my preference. Because yeah. I mean, that what in in that same clip, I was getting down to what, like a reggae song or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> I don't listen to fucking 
I ain't never even heard none of that shit before. <laughs> I don't know nothing about no goddamn reggae, man. I'm from Kalamazoo, Michigan. You know what I'm saying? I All I know is, is ribs and and trying to stay alive during the wintertime and practice here and there and so you know go to work come home you know that, that's all i don't know about no goddamn reggae that ain't on my playlist you know <laughs> but i'm still able because of experience i'm still able to manage on, on the songs because once i start doing whatever i'm doing i don't i don't operate off of a preference you know what i'm saying i I'm, i just had to train that out of myself and to beat it out of me because i'm not always going to like the music I, that i hear somebody else is playing I'm not always going to be happy about it. You know, I'm not going to always want to hear, you know, I, I might be in the mood to hear some some old school 80s R&B, you know, and this motherfucker's yeah. over here playing straight up electro. Well, this is what I got to deal with. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, so me not having a personal uh, a preference, that that's how it's, it's kind of worked to my advantage. That and understanding, oh. understanding how DJs work, um, yeah. uh, which is why I got DJ equipment. You know what I'm saying? Once I moved to Australia, so I can more understand of why they do or make certain choices and how I can actually do that and pop it as far as how to always stay on, on point. Yeah. If they do a change or what, what what type of scratch is that? Or You know what I'm saying? Like, so I can actually mail that. It's just, I had to take out the preference. Um, but but it's only a, but, a handful of us that can pull. It's shit, J-Rock was in there with us. Yeah. But you know, that, that's what I was just going to say. Like, that that's the difference between our generation and what's going on nowadays is we were our dance was raised in at the raves, at the clubs, at the you know what I'm saying, yeah. where we had no Boy, control yeah. over the music. So when it wasn't practice, oh I'm a, I'm gonna play my favorite playlist on the iPod and that's it. Oh, we, yeah. would, we would we to go to clubs and dance to fucking whatever the fuck the DJ was gonna play, whether we liked it or not. If it's your round, it's your round. And you gotta, yep. we had to adapt to the music that was played. You know, whether yep. it was drum bass, reggae, fucking straight breaks, uh, fucking house breaks, whatever it was, bro, like we had to adapt to it. You know what I mean? And that's, I, I kind of feel like we, we have an advantage because of that. Because the, mm -hmm. the new generation, they, they rarely go to clubs now. Oh, yeah. This is true. No, and, you know, and also because I think your guys' generation is the last of the purists in hip hop or purists in the scene that we call hip hop. Because, you know, now people say popping's not hip hop or whatever, all this sort of shit. But when you guys were coming, we did everything together. And the focal point was the DJ, MC, and breaking. You know, when you went to a jam, and then if a jam yeah. was nice enough to have a popping space, not a room, a popping space. You're gonna go there, and um, the DJ is gonna have vinyl. The DJ yeah. is going. Yeah. The DJ's not there to play for a popping battle. It was probably a DJ that's not being able to get put on in the b boy room. That they they're like, yo, all right, go go spin for the poppers real quick. And he's like, I'm gonna, yeah. he's like, fuck that. I'm about to spin every fucking vinyl I got. I don't give a fuck if it's funk, break, <laughs> any of that shit. So, yeah, I think your guys' generation was really the last of the purists where, like, a lot of the people, the MC probably knew how to spit some bars. You know, the DJ knew how to scratch or tried to scratch. And then with y'all, you know, it was just, like, straight up poppers. <laughs> you know, motherfuckers was, was getting it in, you know. And um, damn, damn, that's so so legendary. Like, I want to ask, too, just to um, get this out there, too. I want to see what was every single one of y'all's first crew. Like, what was your first official crew? Because I know your generation, a lot of them are b-boy crews. But, um, yeah, we'll start with Frantic. What was your first crew? My first crew was the Wrecking Crew. And right. we were, we were, I was in seventh grade when I, like, introduced myself to the actual crew. Um, I low-key had to, like, even showcase, like, my skills and my talent. Mm -hmm. But I already had my whole school kind of like wondering, like, who the fuck is this motherfucker? Like, where did he come from? You know, so by by that point, no matter what school I went to, I was already hanging out with the older kids just for the skill level. But the first crew that I was involved with. Let's 
get it.